In this video, we look at how to use differential calculus to find the coordinates of turning points of curves. Uh, this is also known as finding maximums and minimums, and it leads into the concept of optimization. But we'll talk about that at the end of this video. Okay, so we're currently in Topic 5 Calculus in the AI course. In Topic 5, there are two main subtopics, and they are differential calculus and integral calculus. Now, inside differential calculus, there are two ap types of applications, and they are finding the equations of tangents and normals, that's the first one, and then also finding the coordinates of turning points, which leads into optimization, which is what we're talking about in this video. Now, this is the fourth of a four-part video series of the subtopic of differential calculus. In the first video, we introduced what differential calculus actually means, and we talked about having a curve, and that the derivative will give us the slope of the curve at any point. Now, the slope is also the gradient of the tangent at any point. So if you haven't watched that video titled Overview of Different Calculus, I recommend going and watching that first. This, that'll, make, that'll give this a lot more sort of sense of what we're talking about here. In the second video, we talked about how to actually differentiate. So if we start with an equation like this, we then differentiate it to find the derivative. And in the third video, we talked about tangents and normals. And in this video, we're talking about turning points. Okay, so let's go ahead and read this question. We want to find the coordinates of the turning point of this curve here. So that's this coordinate. Now you may be thinking, well, that's easy. I can just read this straight off the axes. And, and if you said that, that's a great observation. But sometimes it won't be that easy. Sometimes it might be decimals. Sometimes you actually won't uh, have the axes here. So it won't always be that easy. But we do know in advance that our answer here is going to be 2, 6. But we are going to also find that answer using the derivative. And, and, and we'll go through that process uh, in a second. But let's talk now about the really important understanding of why turning points are interesting in terms of differential calculus. Okay, at this turning point here, let's draw a tangent to the curve at this point. So a tangent will run parallel to the curve at this point, and it will look something like this. Now notice that that is a horizontal line. Recall your understanding of linear lines, that a horizontal line has a gradient of zero. Okay, very important understanding there. The gradient of this tangent is equal to zero, which means that the slope of this curve at the turning point is equal to zero. Now recall that the derivative, so let's call it the derivative, y dash, gives us the slope of the curve. Now we actually know that that is equal to zero. This is the really important understanding here. So at turning points, we can let we can let the derivative equal zero. So let's go ahead now and find the derivative. We have done this before in, in, in video three, but we'll do it again. So y dash, actually I'll rewrite the equation. So y, our y curve here is negative x squared plus four x plus two. Let's go differentiate this. So y dash is equal to negative 2x plus 4. Now I'm going to bring this concept back in. At the turning point, the slope of the curve is equal to 0. And I know that the derivative gives me the slope. So I can sort of join these two things together. I'm actually going to let my derivative be equal to 0. So therefore, 0 is equal to negative 2x plus 4. And I can use some algebra here to now go ahead and solve for x. Now you may be thinking, well, what's that going to give me? If I solve for x here, that will give me the x-coordinate of the turning point. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to add 2x to both sides. In other words, take the negative 2x over to the left is equal to 4. Let's now divide both sides by 2. I get x is equal to 2. And there we go. You'll see that actually lines up with our visual um, inspection of the coordinates of the turning points. x is equal to 2. So there we have it. We have found the x-coordinate of the turning point by using our understanding that at the turning point, the slope is equal to zero. And combining that with, with the derivative gives us the slope at any point. We can now find the corresponding y-value of the turning point by subbing in 
x equals two into our equation. I won't go do this here. Uh, I'm gonna assume that you can do that. If we sub in x equals two into our equation there, we will get a corresponding y value of six. So therefore our coordinates of our turning point will be two comma six. Okay, so there's a demonstration there as to how we can use the derivative to go ahead and find the turning point. Now this becomes very useful when we lead into these optimization type questions. And if you're, in, if you're an AI SL student, these will most likely pop up at the end of paper two as one of the harder problem solving questions. And there's a couple of great questions in the question bank. And I, I brought one here about we start with a shape so we have this storage box here, which is made from a rectangular piece of cardboard, lengths 45 centimeters and 24 centimeters in width. And the corners are cut out to create this storage box. And then we have an equation here for the volume of the box. And we want to find the dimensions of X, which is the uh, measurements of these cutouts that maximize the volume of the box. Really good question, this one. And we can actually plot this particular equation here, which is this curve here. So we have the x dimensions on the horizontal axis, and we have the volume dimension on the vertical axis. And depending on what lengths we use for x, these, these corner cutouts, we can actually maximize the volume of the storing box, which is really useful. We want storage boxes to be large, to be able to fit plenty of things inside it. We are restricted by the initial size of the rectangular piece, but if we can use some smarts and some differential calculus to optimize the cutout dimensions, we can actually maximize the volume. And that maximum volume, that optimal point, will be this turning point here. So we could differentiate the volume equation, solve for x, That'll give us the corresponding x value. And then we can substitute that back into the volume equation to get the corresponding volume. Now, if you're a little bit confused by that, it's understandable. This is probably as hard as it gets in the AISL course. So I recommend going and practicing some of those questions in the differential calculus um, section of the question bank. But there we have it. That was an overview into how to find the turning points of a curve using differential calculus. Uh, I recommend going and practicing some of these questions in the question bank section.